Oh, oh. <gasps> no, they were doing so well. It was the blonde hair, wasn't it? We get blonde hair, they think they're everything. Nagisa Kashi Kashi Kashiwagi wants to kill. He gets a little taste of success and just wants it all. Who's it with, though? <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh, I thought it was about whether or not to stay together. Because that's a really interesting conversation in itself. What? What? That is so harsh. Oh no, she doesn't deserve that. Although I feel like it's going to be a misunderstanding, knowing the show. It would be so interesting though if it if you did cheat on her and that was the dilemma. That's a tough one. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer to that, even though I think there's a common standard response to it. It's tough. But I'm honestly stunned by Kaguya's initial response to that. Nobody deserves to be cheated on. Because it's not really the point. As soon as your responsibility is dictated by someone else's demeanor, I feel like you've gone astray already. Cheating in itself contains a broken promise and if somebody wants to be with someone else or sleep with someone else that's a decision to make but that's not an excuse to dispense with the need to honor your word it's a slippery situation because if you're basing your own conduct on other people's conduct it just gives you a real easy way to do what you already want by finding things you don't like about other people and just framing their behaviors in ways that are intolerable because no one is perfect and everyone's going to slip up and everyone, especially in relationships, is going to, you know, have things that are not ideal. Do you trust yourself to draw the line in regard to what is justified? And if it gets to that point where you're, you're sure, doesn't that mean you should end the relationship? You know what I mean? <laughs> And this is where we find out it's an, a misunderstanding? Oh, I, I just realized it. It occurred to me. Someone laughed. There it is. <laughs> Indeed. I knew it. I knew she was gonna say that. I knew she was gonna say that, and it gets it, this gets me so. Oh, I see. She just defines cheating differently. Okay, that's a little. Wow, wow, that is a really graphic, blurred image. Mm. Oh, we hit him with the civil code, Ino Miko. <laughs> Not exactly sure if that's relevant, but at least we're thinking. Oh, that's sort of a breach of trust right there. Indeed. Ooh. No, but you don't know that. Oh my god, why is this so real? Oh no! You know, Miko, it's me and you against the world. <laughs> you would hope it would end there. You would hope it would end there, but it doesn't end there because the suspicion has already been planted. I was talking about this in another video. Oh, it was Spy X Family, the meddling neighbors. There's such an important concept here, I think. For the second time, I'm going to mention the Swedish movie The Hunt because I feel like that movie, it just encapsulated this concept so perfectly, but accusations and suspicions are like nails in wood. You can remove the nail later, but there's always going to be a hole. If someone is accused of something and there's just a, a small amount of evidence to suggest that, and there's no way to concretely prove one's innocence, even if there is a way to concretely prove one's innocence, people will always on some level wonder if it really happened. I'll give an example that's a little bit personal, but whatever. When my girlfriend and I were first dating, we had a night out drinking with a bunch of friends. And at that point, we really couldn't communicate very well because we don't speak the same language. And it, it was like the first month or two of us dating. And there was a big mis misunderstanding between her and my friend. And she got really mad at me for not taking her side. We've, we've since cleared all of this up. There was really no harm done at that point, but she was really upset. And so she broke up with me on the spot and left. And so it was just me and my friend kind of roaming the streets. And we got approached by a woman who owned a, a dance studio and she invited us to go drink with her and her friends which we did and to be fair i probably should have just gone home but like i was pissed off too you know and i had just gotten dumped the last thing i wanted to do was go back to my empty hotel room because that's where i was living at the time so me and my friend just went i didn't think anything of it and there were three girls there and we just you know chatted and drank and ate snacks and I spent a lot of the time on my phone telling my friends about what had happened with my girlfriend and feeling miserable and you know I was there for like two hours and then I left and I spent the next five hours wandering the streets in the rain calling friends in a state of despair about the fact that I just gotten dumped. However, later when my girlfriend learned that I had done that, that I had gone to what was in essence a private place with other women, she had the suspicion that I had cheated on her, which I absolutely had not. And to make things really worse, what really put the nail in the, the wood, I guess, as we're going with that metaphor, she asked a lot of the people around her what they thought. And apparently, 100% of the people said it was a sure thing that I had cheated on her. And from then on, there was just no way I could ever clear that completely. Because it's just a big black hole of time, basically. I mean, I have the texts that I was sending and I have the record of the phone calls from my friends, but it's not absolute concrete proof that I didn't do anything, right? That was a year ago. And so it's sort of been resolved, but I know for a fact that she'll always sort of wonder. And I know that because I've been on the other side as well. You know, there's always a lingering doubt. 
And, you know, the place I've come to in that regard is if you don't have any evidence to the contrary, then it's probably better to just believe what people tell you. Nobody wants to feel like they're being duped. You know, there's that, that suspicion and the fear of that, but you got to just let go. If you really want to face the truth, the truth is that bad things you don't like are happening around you. And the worst things are things you probably will never even get a glimpse of. And so you just act with the information you have and you give everyone the benefit of a doubt. That makes you clean. You know what I mean? That ensures you're not the villain. And if people are doing terrible things behind your back, that's kind of on them. And when that comes to light, that's a decision to make. But until then, you put your best foot forward. I know that sounds naive maybe, but I don't really see a better way given the problem of just not being omnipotent and not being able to know everything. The point I wanted to make initially was that you gotta be really careful what you say about other people if you don't have skin in the game. One thing it's taught me is I will never weigh in towards the negative in something I don't know about because I do not want to contribute to that. People are way too flippant about trashing a friend's significant other, completely ignoring their humanity or their desire to be in the relationship or how much it means to them them or how much they put into the relationship. It's just coming in with a, a hammer and just knocking down the foundation for, for what? I get that there's some sympathy there. There's wanting to support your friend, but there's a lack of consideration of the full scale of possibilities and humanity of other people and the stakes other people have in relationships, it's better just to not get involved. If you want to support, you can be emotionally supportive without making accusations. I mean, I feel like even telling that story I just told, there are going to be people who hear this who are like, he definitely did it. You know what I mean? It's just, that's how, how deep the suspicion goes. That's how easy it is to do damage. Also, a lot of the people that were saying this about me were people I'd met and, and like drank with and even traveled with. And so for me, it was a, it was a huge betrayal made all the more infuriating by the fact that they will bear no consequences for that at all. They'll never apologize. You know, people are quick to swoop down when things are going wrong, but it's less easy to praise where praise is due. Even the neighbors in Spy X Family, even the meddlesome neighbors did that, but most people don't do that. I'm hoping that Miko <laughs> like prevails here because this is absurd, like no evidence, but she's able to spy on his phone secretly and tell other people about his infidelity. You know, it's too much. She is annoying. <laughs> she deserves to get cheated on. No, I'm kidding. There you go. There you go. That's great. But oh no, oh no. Oh no. Wow. Right, I trusted him so much I paid money to have him stalked. Miko's outgunned here. No, I'm on your side. Uh-huh. I mean, it might not be the best idea. If he's not telling her what he's doing, that's, that is a sort of infidelity. I get that. The only way this works out is if, if it's like a present. You know, he's doing something for her or his family, like it might be his sister. I mean, he, he could have been more transparent about whatever this was. It's also possible he's cheating. <laughs> Not to say he's innocent by default. I'm leaning on sister. I'm leaning sister. And we just got a, a glimpse of... Uh, oh. Oh, it was Hayasaka. It was Hayasaka. See, that suspicion. That suspicion creeps in. <laughs> now I got skin in the game. Now I got stakes. Now it wasn't cheating. Demon. She is a demon. Yo, yo. Yeah, he is always with uh, Chika. Oh no! I need comfort from aesthetically pleasing men. This is what you should have done from the beginning. But that's a losing game too, because if he tells the truth and or if he if he hasn't cheated and he tells her he hasn't cheated, that's not a satisfying answer. You've got nowhere. Sadly, things are weighted against goodness and honesty in that sense, in that particular sense, because if you're accused of something and you say you didn't do it, that's exactly what someone who did something bad and wanted to cover it up would say. The only way to get any kind of closure is to have done something wrong and then admit to having done something wrong. What about the people who never did anything wrong? There's no way to clear that out you know it's sort of the responsibility of the of the person to have faith as unsatisfying as an answer might be and then i guess just for everyone just to conduct yourself in a manner that is as open and honest as possible to a reasonable degree at least and best of all don't do anything you have to lie about create a paper trail <laughs> or something i don't know take photos every five minutes solid and why did you ask and there it is, it's a present. It's a present and it was my sister. Wow, what a... <laughs> who would have ever thought of that as a gift? I'm actually, I'm with the girls in this one. <laughs> That's, it's, I don't know, cute. Well, because she loves him and she's relieved. But who exactly is Maki? Only Chika is happy. <laughs> because Chika is free. <laughs> and they've definitely done it. Oh, but it wasn't a sister. Oh, she did like him. Oh, but she has ambitions. Maki Shijo wants to take action. This is getting 
This is getting interesting. <laughs> oh, and a warning! Damn, this is good. With a smiling and kind face. That's a victory lap for her. I need to escape so I can cry. I need a safe place to cry. <laughs> Wrecked. Yeah, I know that feeling too. And crying. <laughs> Screaming and crying. Oh no, is he an aspiring rapper? <laughs> what was she? Okay. Is this Lurking Girl? I've been in the series the whole time. Maki. Maki Shijo. We, we can... Oh, she's also a Shinomiya? Shinomiya the Lesser. I was busy dying. <laughs> we all wonder sometimes how we got here, huh? Yeah, how did how did this happen? How did we end up in this mess? <laughs> I don't know, how, how good is the rat's offensive capabilities? Mm, man, this is this is rich. This is like cutting in all sorts of directions here. I am pulled in by this high school romance plot. Call me old school, but I think if someone else has a significant other, that's it. You know, leave them alone. I mean, I know stories where people started successful relationships with people who were already in relationships and it ended up working out really well. So that's great. And there are exceptions to everything. But I just feel like, you know, if nothing else, if you steal, let's say, someone out of a relationship, aren't you always going to wonder when it's going to happen to you? Doesn't it say something about the other person's ability to honor commitments over their own personal whims? I firmly believe in karma, not as a mystical force, but as one, the fact that you're creating the world that you live in through your own actions. And two, that a lot of your life is going to be determined by your expectations. And you're going to expect or expect the same from others that you do yourself. So if you're someone who successfully starts dating someone who was in a relationship at that time, isn't that something that you then start to expect and fear? And in ways I can't fully explain, your fears end up becoming things that you create. You know, your actions sort of become enzymes in a sense. You know, they're things that mold around the behavior you expect that shapes the other person into that behavior. <laughs> Here's an oversimplified and perhaps dumb example, but what comes to mind? Let's take someone who has cheated in the past on a significant other. They're then going to expect their significant other of cheating all the time. And so they're likely to be highly suspicious and antagonistic in certain ways, which is a punishment for the other person's good behavior. And if you're not rewarding good behavior and instead punishing good behavior, the people are more likely to not continue to do good behavior. Not to say that they're absolved of responsibility. It's just what's more likely. I think it's probably fair to say that people who are unsatisfied in relationships or feel like their good things they put forward in relationships are not being understood or met or, or matched are probably more likely to cheat. So you're raising the occurrence of the thing you're fearing happening. I mean, Ishigami is probably right. He's definitely right, but it doesn't matter. You can't make her admit this. Why is he trying to force a confession? <laughs> what is it? What are his stakes? There you go. Oh, who's chasing who here? Exactly. Thank you, Miyuki. Miyuki and Ino Miko. My two horses in this race. <laughs> really rubbing it in. Sticking the knife in deeper. <laughs> yeah, this comes up too. You gotta let this, these things go. That's just the, the only answer. XXXC. Sounds explicit. And Kraken was there. What does this result in a grudge against Kaguya? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was Miyuki. Oh, so so much for not meddling. Okay. I'm getting whiplash from listening to this girl's thoughts. <laughs> No. No, don't do that. We have better things. Student count. Okay. No student council things to do. This is a hurricane you're letting into your life. Auntie. Ah, oh, she's the head family. Hurricane. Hurricane. Hurricane Maki. Tell that to the guys. And you have just become my mortal enemy to be destroyed. Her emotional volatility? Is it a caretaker instinct thing? Aww. Yeah. Yeah. No, she just, she moved up in the world. She's a character now. I feel like we just, we've started a dark, dark path. Miyuki Shurgani wants to be believed. Is this going to be what I was talking about? With like the suspicion? Rumors. Careful of rumors. But in reality, if you don't move fast, he's gonna find someone. He's a catch. I think that's part of the fantasy. Like he's exclusive only to her, even though they're not—they're not dating. And that's really beautiful, you know. But I, I don't know. 
I just feel like in real life, with romantic relationships, they gotta be moving forward. People have needs, you know, and they get tired of being kind of stuck on a plateau. Miyuki is a good-looking, responsible, successful, athletic, intelligent, popular-ish teenage boy. The threat always exists. This could be a lot of fun. Chika, give her some credit. She's always creating fun in this office. She's got so many activities that they can do. Why the coin though? Oh, I see. It's hidden. That actually does sound fun. I'm gonna save this. I just had this. Publicly denounced. Like, she didn't go home and get this. She just had this in school already. I always wonder, like, how far ahead her plans go. I, this sounds great. Why do you lie? Why do you lie to yourself? Oh, and it's randomized. Ooh, interesting. Who's the third? I hope every, everything, everything better be tails. Everything better be tails. <laughs> Why would they hate him? I bet it was Inomiko who did, yes. I'm still wondering about who's the third person in love. It could be something stupid like Chika being in love with her dog. Since it's been established, they do it all the time. I don't think it's Inomiko because I don't think she would say she's in love with Ishigami and say she hates Ishigami. It could be Ishigami. I mean, I feel like despite him trying to protect himself, he falls in love easily. No. That's okay. Pails. All tails, as it should be. That's sweet. <laughs> so glad we played this game. You know, Miko wins this round. Aww. Maybe you don't need that recording anymore. I was also talking about host clubs with her. I feel like she's a natural. Yeah, gee, I wonder who that would be. Oh no, the years. Oh no. Do you like Kaguya? Oh, this is a lot of power. Do you have a crush on me? Ooh. You know, it'd be real juicy if more than one heads come up. And Chika also also knows the game, right? She knows how to cheat. Ooh. This actually is like the best strategy I've seen so far in the show. <laughs> Wait, what? I missed that joke. This game is favored by loose women. <laughs> Today I learned I'm a loose woman. Okay, that's to be expected. How can they all be so tense? But is it not the right... Oh. oh, he also figured out the game. Damn, he's so good. He's so sharp. This is some light level, some light level understanding and scheming. Light versus L. Kiss his feet. <laughs> and then head off Evangelion style. But does she... Oh... Oh, make her pay for it. Checkmate. Does she have other coins? Chica also knows the game, I'm guessing. <laughs> They're all pretty, pretty sharp kids, huh? Now would be a great time to confess, actually. I'm going to give the answer straightforwardly. What's on his side is that she wants to. This is what she wants to hear. That went well, all things considered. Nah. He won. How do they not know? <laughs> Seriously. For real, how do they not know? How can these kids be this smart and this dense at the same time? But I feel like with that scene, that's that went nicely. That's how it goes optimally, right? Like, she'll never know for sure. And if she looks for it, she'll find out. You know, she'll find reasons to think that he did. Not that he would have even been wrong to do it since they're not in a relationship. I think Miyuki handled it really well, trying to just get in front of it and expressing his, his feelings clearly. Well, clearly-ish. I think it does a couple things. One, it shows that he cares about her feelings and her thoughts which is great. It's a mini convention in itself. Two, I think people who are hiding things genu genuinely don't try to get in front of things like that. They would want to avoid the conversation entirely, although it's not necessarily proof that something didn't happen. People can use goodness as a disguise for badness, but I feel like knowing Miyuki goes a long way in knowing that he's genuine and he, he probably wouldn't do that. First of all, the action, but also he wouldn't go the extra mile to try to get at the issue with her if he didn't deeply care about her. Oof, that was a, a really juicy episode milking the high school romance drama up to 11 first with the new character mika and then with the the love game which i'm 100 gonna play if i ever end up on a group date again 